Let's repurpose and upcycle primitive decor from thrift store and dump finds. Like this chalkboard mail holder into this, this metal plate into this, and this weird strange piece of wood and a strainer into this. Let's get started. Project number one. So this little chalkboard organizer is pretty cool. I really like it and the color isn't that bad, but it's just not my thing. And the organizer part in the front is a little bent. So I can easily take that off with my screwdriver and a few screws out of that. And of course I had to take my sticker off. And I decided I was gonna paint the little metal holder here in the front. I'm gonna use my Waverly Black chalk paint and I'm gonna paint it all black. So it's just, uh, it's probably about two coats. Uh, one coat didn't do it. I had to kind of go one way and then the other direction. And you know, it's metal and there's holes in it, so it takes a while. But I got all the way through it and it worked pretty well. And now I've set that aside to dry and I'm going to attempt to tape off my chalkboard so that I don't get any paint on it because I am gonna paint this. Now I say attempt because this did not work, unfortunately. And I didn't like the color. So this is from Kills uh, and it's a just a light, light brown, I don't know, off-white color. And I usually like it, but I did not like it for this piece. For some reason, the color just did not appeal to me at all. It's also a regular acrylic paint. So it, um, I don't know, it was a little bit shiny. Like, I don't know. And I don't like shiny. I like flat paint. But anyway, we're going to fix that. I just mixed in a little bit of black paint in that same paint and made a little bit of a darker, like a grayish color. And I kind of like this one better. I'm still not super happy with it, but it's better and I'll make it even better later on. So I'm appealing off the tape that I had on my chalkboard and oh look, wonderful. I had bleed through on the edges and so I tried not to have to paint that, but guess what? I'm gonna have to paint it anyway. So I just decided I would paint the whole thing and give it a whole fresh coat. Now I just did a coat of black chalk paint on that chalkboard and now I'm using a stencil. This is us. It says, I don't know where I got this. I just had it in my stash and I said, well, wonderful. I'm going to just use it. So I did several coats on this in a burgundy chalk paint that I had and I got it so it was nice and dark and it looked really good. But again, I was not happy with the color along with the gray. It just did not stand out enough. I just didn't like it. I don't know what my problem was that day, uh, but I did not like it. So I had to sit on it for a little while and figure out what I was going to do next. At, at this point, I was like, eh, I'll, I'll just, just let it go for a while and see. So I decided to work on the basket. I got that back attached on there and I added some Mod Podge to the little metal, I guess, finials, maybe you'd call it, the little decorations in the middle and the corners. And then I added some of my grubby mix to give it a, like a rusty look on those. And I thought that looked really good. I didn't like it with the paint, but I knew in the back of my mind that I was going to change that anyway. So we're just going to go with it. So once I got my grubby mix on where I wanted it. I just went back over the grubby mix and sealed it on with my Mod Podge. Now that's going to dry clear and you'll be able to see it really well. So once I got that done, this is like the next morning and the sun's shining brightly through the window and I decided, yeah, this is definitely got to go. Even though I really love the stencil, I don't like the color. So we're going to redo it. So again, for the second time. We're going to paint this cute little chalkboard with the black uh, Waverly paint and we're going to give it a fresh coat so that we can re-stencil over the top. So this time I went with an off-white color. This is my Restore uh, repurposed paint from 
uh, tractor supply and I really like this much better with the colors. Now I went through and distressed around the edges with some black paint just with a kind of a little bit of black on a brush and brushed it onto that gray so it gave it some distressing because I couldn't distress back with sandpaper. I also distressed the lettering with a little bit of black paint just to give it a just you know an older look uh just look more aged and um, distressed and i'm much happier with that now i did have a little uh a little bit bleed out underneath the uh, stencils so i'm just going with a little brush and a little bit of black paint and this is finished and i'm much happier with it I got this metal plate at Goodwill for $2 and it's been sitting around for a little while. It looks like it came from probably Hobby Lobby at one point and I really like it and I at the time didn't have any idea for it but I do now. So I got to take the sticker off and we're going to make a really primitive plate here and we're going to use both of my stencils that I have. Now they're going to be in my Etsy shop which is down in the description. So if you're interested in either one of these, they're down there. I have plenty of both so we can get creating together. So I'm going to take some chalk paint and go around just the wide edge and paint that all black. Now I'm just going to do one coat because I'm going to distress back. This is going to be really primitive, really distressed, and I don't need any more than one coat because I'm going to go back with some water and we're going to bring some of that metal in the plate back. So there's my one coat and I'm just going to take a damp towel, paper towel, and it really took next to nothing to get that to come off because it was stuck to metal and it was very fresh. I had just done it, just dried it with my heat gun and now I'm going back and as you can see getting a pretty heavy distress on that and by the time I'm done wiping it off and drying it, it it's even more distressed and I love it. I really love the look of it. It looks so cool, so aged. So I just went around and, and dried it off and then I took some white paint uh, or off-white paint and I put it on a brush and I'm just showing you up close what this looks like but I dipped my brush into some white paint and I put some sprinkles around the edges now I did that first because I am going to be using some stencils in the middle and I didn't want those with the white paint on them. So we're just putting spots on. Now I've realized when I bang my brush over the top of my scissors, I get really big splatters, which I wanted. And then if I go with my scissors over the top of my brush and bang the brush, I get little tiny little splatters. I don't know if that's true, but that's what it seems like. And I've done it for a long time, so I think that's how it works. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I really like how that looks. It gives it some more dimension and like it's been maybe in a shop and gotten splattered with paint. And I don't know. I just like it. So this is my stencil that I have in my Etsy shop. It is a crow. You can use it one way, facing one way or facing the other. You can use it with the string and the star or without. Today I'm going to use it without the string and the star because we're going to be using another one for um, having a flower vine or berry vine kind of hanging down from it. My friend Tracy gave me this idea a while back and I've been waiting for the right piece and the inspiration to hit me on how I was going to do it and here it is. I'm bringing it to you right now. So I'm just uh, stippling on some black paint and I just did one coat on this crow because again I'm going to go back and distress it a little bit. I want this guy to look aged old and like he's been around for a while. So right now he looks nice and sharp and crisp. 
but we're going to age him up. So this is my other stencil that I have, Bittersweet Prim. Now this, even though it's like a fallish type thing, you can use this anytime just by changing the colors, which is what we're going to do today. using a small piece of the vine to hang from his beak and we're gonna hang that down I'm using some dark green like Christmassy green and moss color and I'm mixing them together to tone it down a little bit I didn't like the bright Christmas green but I didn't also like the tame look of the moss color uh, from Waverly so I mix the two together and I really like the look of it it's not too in your face it's an older colored green i think so we have that hanging out i do fix his little beak a little bit because i got some paint on it so it's going to look like he actually has a hold of it so now i'm just going to take a the back side of my paintbrush i do this a lot and i'm just going to make little berries with my burgundy paint and uh, just pop those on sometimes i do bundles of three sometimes I do singles and I just go do a few up and down this little vine uh, I didn't show it but I also and I will show it later on but I also do a vine across his neck and it I just take pieces of that vine off from that uh, uh, stencil and I just love how stencils are versatile like that you can use pieces and parts from it and not use the whole thing so after putting the little berries on there, I go ahead and uh, just keep adding more of the vines and the berries until I'm happy with it. I didn't want to go too overboard because I didn't want it to make it super, super Christmassy. Uh, I wanted to, you know, if somebody wanted to leave this out all year long, I think they still could. So there you go, you can see around his neck where I put some vine and then add berries. And then I did some around his feet and up over onto the black of the rim of the, of the plate. So I'm just, just playing around with it and having some fun. And I think this came out really cute. After I was done with my vines and berries, I decided to add a little bit of some spots around the crow. So I just took some black paint and did the same thing I did around the rim and just sprinkled black paint and uh, made little spots to give it some more age. For another touch, I take my stencil and just take the prim word from that and I stencil that in the blank spot down near his feet and then I fill in where it has the attachments or detached from the rest of the uh, stencil and I give it a good dry and as here you can see I've gone over the crow and I have distressed him just like I did the edges of the plate so he has some distressing so he matches the rest of the plate now I'm totally covering the whole plate with antique wax from Waverly fresh right out of the bottle and I'm going to go over the whole thing all over the black all over the picture everything and then I'm going to go back and just with a paper towel here you can see I'm just kind of uh, tamping on the plate I'm not going to wipe it off what I want to do is leave spots of the antique wax here and there and it's gonna make it look like it's rusted 
and aged and kind of just been through it uh, for years and it's just built up over time. So I think this came out so, so cute. It's so primitive and it, um, I don't know, I just love it. I hope you guys do too. This was a pretty cool dump find. I don't know what it was or what it was used for, but I really liked the look of it and I had no idea what I was going to do with it until I found at the dump also a strainer, a cute little strainer. So this had a little hanger on it and when I saw the hanger and the little strainer, I was like, yep, I'm going to put those two together. So I had to give it a good clean, of course, because it came from the dump. You never know, you know, and I want to paint it. So I'm breaking out the Waverly chalk paint again in the color ink. And we're going to give this a paint job. And we're only going to do one coat on this. It covers really well. I'm going to go back in distress. So there's no need of putting two coats on there and then turning around and wiping it back. Sometimes I need to on certain pieces if I'm going to do a light distress. This one I'm going to do a fairly heavy distress on and uh, I, it's just one coat is going to be fine. So I do that all over except for that I didn't do the back or the bottom because it's just a plain wood color and I don't think it needs it. But here is the strainer that I found. It is the cutest little strainer. It's just a little bugger and it has these cute little ears on the side which end up being kind of like feet. So I put some paint on the end of the little hanger that's on the wood and I pressed it to the back of my strainer so I could see where to drill a hole because I'm going to set that little strainer down in that. It didn't have a hole. It didn't have a hook or anything. So I'm just going to put a little hole in it so that it will sit back and be able to be attached to something so it won't fall off with the way that I'm going to use this. This is going to be just a little primitive display with a little light and uh, it's they're just so cute in primitive decor having these little these cute little different ideas uh, to put into your vignettes. I'm, of course, giving it a little bit of a distress, uh, actually quite heavy distress all around. And then, of course, I seal it with my sealer to uh, make it easier to clean. And I think it makes it, give it a, gives it a richer look. So I'm going to grubby up a candle in this one. I've had some people ask me, how come you're not grubbying up candles? It's because I do it all the time off camera. Uh, I do it for my Etsy shop, which I sell tea lights and votives. This one is a votive, and I sell the non-timer -tim and the timer lights. And so I'm constantly buying them and constantly grubbying them. So I don't do them on videos much anymore, but I really need to because people do miss it because I've had several people ask me or tell me, I wish you were going to grubby something. So here I am, <laughs> I'm grubbying a candle. Uh, so all I do is just the way I'm holding it, just to keep my fingers kind of out of the way, I put a coat of Mod Podge all over the little candle. And then I have this mix of uh, grubby mix. This is uh, allspice and cinnamon and cloves and two packages of coffee, instant coffee. And what I do is uh, I will have a link down in the description on how I make this and also on what I use them on. 
uh, wood, metal, wax, all different kinds of things. So um, I will, I, I'll give you a full tutorial in those other videos. But this is basically it. You put the Mod Podge on, you sprinkle on your uh, grubby mix, and you, I let it wait, I let it sit for a little bit and dry. It does tend to work a little bit better, and it doesn't come off as easy when you go to seal it up with your Mod Podge. I didn't wait a super long time for this video, in this video for that to dry, maybe about 10 minutes. And all I'm doing is patting on the Mod Podge. Once I get it patted on there nice and thick, then I will brush it very gently. Unless you've let it dry for a while, it will come back off if you brush it too heavily. So I just pat it with the Mod Podge, give it a nice coat, and then set it aside to dry and it takes a while to dry it takes quite a while depending on the the heat of your home it could take several hours or maybe even overnight now we're going to assemble our primitive piece so i'm adding a little bit of hot glue into that hole that I'm going to set my little handle into so that it will stay. It won't pop out and like it just did there. <laughs> so I, you kind of have to hold it in order to do that and then stick it in there. Now I could have taken that little hook off and just not had it at all, but I would have had to glue it anyway to keep it from moving so I thought that was just going to help it. And I like how it sat up straighter with that little uh, piece there so uh, we're just gonna leave it and it seems to work pretty well so uh, now I'm gonna add some Spanish moss to the inside of my little strainer my little light now that it's all dry we're gonna add that in there turn it on and I love the color of that candle when the grubby mix is on there and it's turned on it looks so nice and so then I grabbed a piece, a couple pieces of pit berries off from a garland I had. And with one of them has a rusty star, so we can have that, of course, in our little, little vignette here. And then I just add them around the candle. And this is so, so primitive looking. I really love how this looks. Now this could go anywhere, dining room, kitchen, uh, I, I, even a living room, I think. But such a cute little little primitive piece. So I'm just adding a couple pieces of just scrap fabric that I have. Gonna double knot it here. I think it's a drop cloth and some of my black and tan check. And then I'm just gonna, I just knotted it and let it cut it. I trimmed it and then just let it hang. And this is done. This is completed and so stinking cute. I hope you guys like it too. I hope you enjoyed my repurposed and upcycled primitive decor. I really love doing these grubby candles. And if you're interested in any of the candles or either one of the stencils, they are available on my website on the Etsy shop. So go check them out. The link will be down in the description and pinned to the comments at the top. Do me a favor and comment down below which one of these was your favorite. So if you haven't already, Please like, share, and subscribe, and have a great day.